by the way, here's a tech tip. Let's shut this off. If you're working on a classic vehicle, let's just say you got an old Corvette with a two-wire SI series alternator, all right? First off, that's really old, but we still work on those Corvettes, don't we? And other cars like that, an old Chevy pickup, whatever. If it's a SI series, that will be only two terminals. They will be big flat blades. It'll be marked one and two. And one rhymes with one, run. One rhymes with run. That's the easy way to remember it. You turn the key on, that voltage to terminal one goes high, but not that high. It's actually dropped across the bulb in the cluster. If you don't have that voltage, reduced voltage across the bulb in the cluster to terminal one on an SI series alternator in a classic car, it's not going to charge. And if you do have it, this is a little trick for those historians, you'll remember this, but if you're teaching uh, a lot of different things in your program, including racing and classic cars and so forth. Those classic cars, those two-wire SI series alternators, had a hole in the back of the, the rear, rear frame of the alternator case, and that hole was shaped like the capital letter D. D is in Delphi. And what you did in the D hole, okay, it's called a D hole, is you took a pocket screwdriver, and while the engine was running, you went in through that D-shaped hole. This is like 1970s, early 80s vintage. And while the engine was running, you were watching a voltmeter, that 40, whatever you had, and you went through that capital D-shaped hole in the frame, you, it bottomed out. The pocket screw never bottomed out in about a, about a half quarter of an inch of travel. That was the tab on the back of the voltage regulator. When you then touched that tab and then moved your screwdriver over horizontally, just a little bit to touch the side of the hole, you grounded that tab with the rear metal case housing of the alternator. Basically, you made that tab on that voltage regulator go to ground, and that created a full field situation. The full field then would make the alternator work full hard. It would make one of the brushes that's the output of the regulator, apply full ground, the other brush had power all the time, with one brush having full power, the other brush having full ground, now the rotor was the biggest, baddest electromagnet it could possibly be, and it created the most voltage of AC three-phase power in the stator winding that's fixed, rotor rotates, those are terms, okay, and then the rectifier bridge would, would then rectify it, the diodes, change it back into DC, and then you would see 15, 16, 17 volts. And you would say, this alternator's fine. If it's not charging when I don't do that with the screwdriver, then it must be a vehicle problem. Fast forward to the next generation of alternators between those old but goody SIs and this style, that's made by Vallejo, Bosch, and other manufacturers, is the CS series. The CS series I mentioned earlier, P, L, F, and S. Those were the terminals. Typically, you could have maybe the L terminal, always the L terminal, and maybe the F and the S. Those were for the BCM to look at voltage and so forth. But the L terminal for lamp was mandatory. All you had to do on those alternators is unplug the regulator and then find which male terminal lined up with the connector for L for lamp and then, of all things, take a test light. And not the Mambi Pambi uh, LCD, not those really cool power probes, but an incandescent bulb style test light. Like this whole snap-on I've had in my box for 40 years, it still works. It basically will wink and tell me I've got a fuse good on both sides, I can check a tail light wire or whatever to see if I've got some power. But the main thing it is, it is a real incandescent lamp and it provides the same kind of a trigger that the lamp in the cluster used to. So you would take it and you would go between the positive of the battery post and then you would touch that L terminal on the PLF and S connector, touch the L terminal, whether you back probed it with the wire or you just pulled it out and touched the L terminal itself or put a little jumper lead in there to fit that male spade. Didn't matter. Just be careful and touch just the L only. When you do on the CS series, if it starts charging, that alternator's fine. It's a problem with the vehicle. If it doesn't start charging, you don't see 13, 14 volts. 
now you need to put an alternator on it. So that was the old trick for the predecessors of these smart charge. When you see on a GM vehicle, two wires and one of these, it's smart charge. Now we do not have an autonomous regulator that just needs to turn on signal. We have a regulator that takes total orders to control the brush, power and ground brushes to the rotor to control the field. And so the L terminal is the control, it is pulsing constantly thanks to the ECM. And the F terminal is a response. This is how we're doing back to the ECM. That's how they work now. But that's a couple tech tips from the way back days because we don't just have a luxury working on new stuff, do we? Sometimes we got to work on that old stuff. Sometimes it's a pleasure to work on it, especially if it's a Corvette.